Hello, this is Todd Luck, and this is a Tarzan of the Apes adaption. This is also a Tarzan of the Apes adaption. Everything around me is a Tarzan of the Apes adaption. And so we're going to go through about a hundred years worth of Tarzan of the Apes comic adaptions. And I'm going to tell you how you can get each of them. And we're going to take a look inside at each of them and see their different interpretations of Tarzan and Jane and the Apes and all that good stuff. All right, so let's start in 1929 with the very first Tarzan of the Apes adaption, which was actually in newspapers. This is the very first comic strips that were published of Tarzan. And this collection is from the Library of American Comics Essentials. And so this is a full adaption of the comics, starting with the scenes with Tarzan's parents on the boat. And of course, there's a mutiny that leaves them stranded on the shores of Africa. And this is Hal Foster artwork, by the way. Tarzan's parents die, and he is taken in by the kindly she-ape Kala. He's raised by the great apes, but eventually discovers his parents' cabin with his father's hunting knife and books that will eventually be his bridge to his humanity. And of course, as an adult, he meets Jane and falls in love. And you'll notice his outfit is a little bit interesting. It would be a little bit before we could get to, you know, kind of the definitive look for Tarzan. He'd wear something very similar in the silent movies of the time. And this is one of the few adaptions that includes the ending of the novel, which takes place in civilization, and is generally, I think, considered to be the weaker part of the novel and oftentimes left out of adaptions. And the cool thing about this collection is it includes adaptions of the first four novels. So you also get an adaption of Return of Tarzan with the only comic adaption that I am aware of that faithfully adapts the beginning of the novel, complete with Nicholas Rockoff. And this is one of only two adaptions that I know of of Beast of Tarzan and Son of Tarzan in comic form. So this is a real hidden gem for Tarzan fans. I got mine on eBay. Um, the cover price is 30 bucks. All right, so next let's jump to the 60s with the Gold Key comics with a, a Tarzan of the Apes adaption by the great Russ Manning. And so it was originally printed in Tarzan 155, but if you're looking for something cheaper, which I was, you can get it here in Tarzan 178. They reprinted it one time, and so this one's a little bit cheaper. Um, the original issues are fantastic because obviously you get the original comics, but you also get backup features and stuff like that. Uh, but you can also get it in trade. Uh, it's a little bit small, but this is actually going to contain the gold key adaptions by Russ Manning of the first four novels. This gets the curious distinction of being the shortest comic adaption of Tarzan and the Apes because the adaptions they did of the first four novels were only one issue apiece. So we get a master class in economy of storytelling. The ship scene only takes up a single page. Both of Tarzan's parents are dead by the end of the second page. And by the end of the third page, he is already being raised by apes. And so the adaption covers up until Tarzan saves Jane for the first time. And it ends with Jane leaving Africa and Tarzan vowing that he will go to civilization and be with Jane. And so I think it tells you just about everything you need to know about the origin. I think if they'd had five more pages or so, they probably could have told the whole thing. But I think what you get here is extraordinary. I mean, just the idea of cramming three-fourths of the novel in a single issue and giving you kind of this short but thorough telling of that much is really extraordinary. So let's move on to the groovy 70s for an adaption that had four issues to work with by the great Joe Kubert. And so you can pick this up in the first four issues that DC published of Tarzan, or you can get it as Treasury Edition, which is one I'm holding right here, or you can get it uh, in the collection that Dark Horse put out of Joe Kubert Tarzan, and that is available in print, but it's also available digitally, and so you can read it on Comixology Unlimited. And so this is one of those rare adaptions that actually goes through the entire novel, starting with his parents on the boat. And here's Kala taking baby Tarzan. 
And here's Tarzan as an adult in all of his Joe Kubert glory. And here's Jane getting ape-napped. And there's no one right way to get this, but if you get the Treasury Edition, you get these little extras like How to Draw Tarzan by Joe Kubert. So also in 1972, Bern Hogarth actually put out an adaption of Tarzan of the Apes. And so it features lots of large images by the great Bern Hogarth. And this is Tarzan's parents on the boat. Here's the scene with Kerchak attacking Tarzan's father and then Kala claiming baby Tarzan. And I would say that this is among the adaptions with the most detailed artwork. Sadly, I have no Jane to show you. It actually ends with Tarzan killing Kerchak and becoming king of the apes. And so it ends before Tarzan meets Jane, but that's okay. I think this is an extraordinary adaption of half of the novel. And so you can get it in its original format like this, or you can get the Dark Horse reprint, which combined it with Bern Hogarth's adaption of Jungle Tales of Tarzan. But however you get it, it's pretty extraordinary stuff. And so this Marvel Super Special in the 90s also adapted half of Tarzan of the Apes. This is Marvel Super Special number 29. It was also printed as a two-issue miniseries. If you choose to get the Super Special, you'll get some additional painted artwork. And it, the paper it's on is a little nicer as well. And here's Tarzan's parents on the boat. And you'll notice that this is one of the few times that Tarzan's father doesn't have a mustache. But he does eventually grow a beard. Here's Kerchak attacking him, and here's Kala taking Tarzan. So this adaption takes a little bit of artistic license. So just like in the novels, he discovers his humanity in the cabin and learns how to read and write. And then he spontaneously grows a loincloth when he's a child when he shouldn't know what clothing is. However, I think, you know, since it happens right after scenes in the cabin, presumably he was inspired by what he saw in his parents' books to do this. And because it ends with the death of Kerchak and him becoming king of the apes, there is no Jane to show you here either. I think the interior artwork by Dan Spiegel is solid. And I love the paintings on the covers. I actually love this cover so much, I have it as a t-shirt. And you can get the t-shirt on Amazon.com. This has the weird distinction of being the only American Tarzan comic published in the 80s, or at least that I could find. Um, it was published to coincide with Greystoke, but doesn't have anything to do with the movie. Normally, these super specials are movie adaptions. So it's just kind of weird to do this half novel adaption, but it's still worth picking up. Speaking of weird adaptions, how about Lord of the Jungle? So this was a series put out by Dynamite Comics that was unlicensed and unauthorized. And the first plot line adapted Tarzan of the Apes. And so what makes this an unusual adaption is that the writer, uh, as he said in interviews, believed that the original novel was racist. And so he made changes because of that. And so this was dealt with by making some of the characters far more racist than they were in the novel. It also replaces all of African characters from the novel with savage ape-like monsters. And so it's a very different version of this story with a very different version of Tarzan, complete with his own unique look. The super long hair kind of makes me think of Conan. The strangest part is what they choose to leave out. So they begin with Tarzan's parents stranded on the coast of Africa. And so leaving out the boat scene is not unusual. But what is, is after Kala takes Tarzan, we skip straight to Jane and her party arriving in Africa, skipping over Tarzan's childhood, which many, like me, would consider to be the best part of the novel and the heart of the whole work. And it also has the odd distinction of having the most extensive version of the ending of the novel in Civilization. It actually spends the most time there of any of these adaptions. So this is a modern comic, so you can get it as individual issues. It's the first six issues of the series. You could get it as trade paperback. You could also get it digitally. It is on Comixology Unlimited. And last but certainly not least is the current comic adaption by Roy Thomas. This is from the online strips on EdgarIceBurrows.com. There is a subscription service with all kinds of Burroughs strips, and Tarzan of the Apes is one of them. 
And this is a hardcover reprinting the first volume of that. And this brings you about halfway through the novel and also includes an adaption of Jungle Tales because what Roy Thomas does is halfway through the novel, he puts Jungle Tales in there because chronologically that's exactly where that would happen. This first volume is by Pablo Marcos and if there's a second volume, it will include his artwork wrapping up Jungle Tales. And so as you can see, the artwork is absolutely gorgeous. It has a one-page summary of what happened on the boat, but that just lets us get to the good stuff in the jungle faster. Here's Tarzan's parents fighting for survival. This is definitely one of the more savage portrayals of Kerchak attacking Tarzan's father, and of course at the bottom we get Kala taking baby Tarzan. And yes, like the Hogarth version, this has extraordinarily detailed artwork. And yes, Tarzan gets to loincloth early in this version as well, but Roy Thomas does actually explain in the story that it was inspired by the things he saw in his parents' cabin. And this is not only an extraordinary adaption of Tarzan and the Apes, but also of Jungle Tales. And so the bad news is the comic strip is still ongoing, and when it finished Jungle Tales, Pablo Marcos left the strip and they got a new artist whose artwork is quite different. But whatever you think about the change in artist, this is still the most thorough adaption ever done in comic form of Tarzan of the Apes. And right now they're at the part where it's just after Tarzan rescues Jane for the first time. And so it'll be interesting to see how they deal with the rest of the novel going forward. And so that's all of the adaptions that I know about of Tarzan of the Apes. But honorable mention goes to the second issue of Marvel Comics' Tarzan from the 70s, and this was the special origin issue by Roy Thomas and John Mishima. Most of this issue is a long flashback to Tarzan of the Apes recapping the novel in summarized form, and it's just so cool to see that classic team from Conan the Barbarian, Roy Thomas and John Bashima, take on this classic work. Another honorable mention is the new Lord of the Jungle series from Dynamite. This one is officially licensed, written by Dan Jurgens. So this issue has a framing story set in the 1950s with an old man, Tarzan. But then most of it is spent recapping the first half of Tarzan of the Apes in flashback form. And it features some fantastic artwork by Benito Gallego. And so this just came out last week, and so I don't know if this is going to continue to recap Tarzan of the Apes or if it's going to go in its own direction. I suspect it'll go in its own direction, but regardless, it is good, and you can check out my review of this, and I do highly recommend it. And of course, there have been adaptions in other media. There have been some movies that have used parts of the novel, like Disney Tarzan or Greystoke, but if you're looking for a real movie adaption of the novel, you need to go to 1918 silent movie Tarzan of the Apes. It's actually a fantastic silent movie adaption, and it ends with Tarzan saving Jane for the first time. Uh, they didn't do the ending of the novel, but boy, is it a great ride up until that point. And so the film is in the public domain, so you can look it up on YouTube and watch it there. But what I recommend doing, if you want a good quality version of the film, plus an extraordinary documentary about it, go on EdgarRiceBurrows.com, go on their store, and order this. Tarzan, Lord of the Louisiana Jungle, not only is it an amazing documentary about the making of the original Tarzan of the Apes, but it also includes a high-quality version of that movie. And there's also a radio adaption of Tarzan of the Apes, and that's the great thing about that novel, is that if you're not ready to dive into the books yet, but you just want to learn about Tarzan's origin, there's just so many different ways to do it. It's just so accessible, and there's so many ways to just jump on and learn about the character. And so let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite adaption of Tarzan of the Apes? All right, guys, like and subscribe for more videos, and until next time. See ya.